Hello, welcome to this section of Mastering Statistics. In this section, we're going to talk about the coefficient of variation. It's got a complicated sounding name, but it really relates to what we've talked about before. We've talked about the variance and the standard deviation, measuring the spread of a data set, right? And this is kind of in the same, uh, the same idea. Now, we've talked many times before, and I've told you that the standard deviation or the variance um, just looking, if you have two sets of data and they have different standard deviations, then I can tell which one is more spread out by just looking at those standard deviations or by looking at the variance. The larger the value, the more spread the data is. So if I have data set one and data set two, and data set one has a, has a larger standard deviation uh, than data set two, then you would know that that data set is the one that has the data more spread out. So that's true, absolutely true. In the course of this discussion we're gonna have, just keep that in the back of your mind. But I do wanna point something out to you that you might not have thought too much about. Let's say that I have two neighborhoods, right? And I'm looking at house prices. Um, neighborhood, that's in H, uh, number one uh, has the following data. Neighborhood number one has the following data. Now that's not very clear. Let's put, make this a number sign here. Neighborhood number one has the following data. The average price of a home in neighborhood one is $120,000, okay? The standard deviation of the houses in that neighborhood is $2,000. Now what this means, and we've talked about it many times before, but I wanna reiterate it, is that the average selling price or the average value of the houses in that neighborhood is $120,000. The standard deviation is $2,000. That means that a good chunk, and I haven't really defined what that means yet. We'll get to it in another section. But it means a good chunk of the houses in neighborhood one actually are plus or minus $2,000 around this mean. So since it's $120,000, that would mean between $118,000 up to $122,000. In that bracketed region, a lot of the houses, a good chunk of them actually are, are falling into that window. So that's neighborhood number one. Now let me let you compare that to neighborhood number two, right? Neighborhood number two. Neighborhood number two, I'm gonna write in blue. The average selling price in neighborhood number two is $900,000, right? Way outside of my price range, $900,000. But the standard deviation in neighborhood number two is $10,000. So for neighborhood number two, it means that the houses are much, much more expensive on average, almost a million dollars, $900,000, and the standard deviation is 10,000 on either side of that mean. So that means that most of the houses in this neighborhood lie uh, between $890,000 up to $910,000, so plus or minus $10,000. In that bracketed window, most of the house prices lie. All right. So my question to you, and I'm going to write it down because we're going to talk about it, which has more spread? Which has more spread? And what I mean by that is which data set, neighborhood one or neighborhood two, to you looks to be more spread? Well, you know, my first gut is to say, well, neighborhood number two is more spread because the house prices, they can, their standard deviation is $10,000. Whereas the house prices here, the standard deviation is only $2,000. So it would stand to reason that neighborhood two has a lot more spread in their houses because $10,000 standard deviation, that's a, that's a very large spread in the amount of, of the house cost in neighborhood number two, which is 